Well, Biden not used to getting cheers whenever he speaks. Uh, he's used to another chant that's been sweeping across the country uh, as of late. And I'm not talking about Let's Go Brandon either. Uh, but uh, for this particular audience that he was in front of, oh, they loved him. But I'm not surprised when you talk about the audience that he was performing in front of. We're going to get into all the details of that in just a second, guys, and much more. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, if you could, guys, consider making a generous donation here to our ministry as we're demonetized on YouTube. They don't support us, but you can help us out in a major way if you enjoy the daily video content we put out. It's talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines in our ministry here of getting people to Jesus Christ. You can help out through PayPal or Patreon. Even just five bucks a month on Patreon will get you bonus content. Plus, we include the links to the YouTube videos so you get all alerts when new content arrives. You can comment there, censorship-free, semi-direct messages. It's a great way to stay up to date with all the content that we put out. Another big reminder, I can't stress this enough, go sub to me on Rumble. That's our backup in case we're kicked off of YouTube. And hey, we're already posting there. So go check it out. All the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing. And for those of you thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So this was at the CNN town hall that took place on Thursday evening. Uh, they just were loving Biden there. But of course they were. This is CNN. They have all their people that are planted there in the audience. Okay, these are all fake, phony people. These aren't real people that are coming in there, okay, that really are supporting Biden by what he says. But all kinds of questions. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Biden was actually able to get through the entire thing. When I mean, he, of course, had his his little gaffes and he he stumbled along as, as, you know, as best as he could there. But the question came up from Anderson Cooper, of all people, who conducted this interview, if you want to call it that. And he asked Biden, you know, point blank, do you think that those cops and first responders that are refusing to take the jab, do you think that they should be fired? Do you think they should be kept home and not paid because they're not willing to go along with your orders? And Biden said, yes and yes, absolutely. They should be fired. And this got all kinds of applause from everybody there in attendance. Look, anybody who's applauding police officers and first responders losing their job because they don't want to make a choice to put something into their body that they don't want, you are un-American. You shouldn't be living in this country at all. And I would also argue that being un-American, you shouldn't even have the right to vote in the first place. But they loved what he said. Biden went on to say that he had no choice but to implement these mandates when he did in September. He said, he goes, I, I tried to hold it off as long as I could, but, you know, people just weren't listening. We weren't getting the numbers to where we wanted them. And he, again, said that these mandates, they work. They absolutely work. And that's what we're going to be doing. If people aren't willing to, to play ball with us, then they deserve to lose our jobs. Now, he didn't say what they would do in place of these cops and in place of these first responders that are heroes each and every single day. He didn't say who'd be replacing them. He didn't mention anything about what would guarantee American safety then if they're no longer employed because he doesn't care about that. They don't want the country to be safe. They want the country to go into complete lawlessness, which I argue is already there now. But we could see it going there at a much bigger scale if we continue to lose these people. And then he said something else that I just found comical. It almost seemed like a dare to me, actually. He said that he does not expect a huge revolt or all of these employees walking off of their jobs because of his mandates. He doesn't expect it at all. I'm sorry, Joe. Did you not see what's been going on with Southwest Airlines, okay? And all the walkouts that took place there? Oh, well, that's that misinformation that you're talking about, right? That didn't really happen. That was all bad weather and air traffic control problems, right? Yeah, because Biden mentioned that. There is this misinformation that he's trying to... Uh, combat out there no we have already seen the walkouts we've already seen the, the revolt have you seen in new york city all the protesting the people rising up people there, there was like a couple hundred workers uh, today i think that actually walked off the job in new york there at general electric <laughs> this, he is delusional he is out of his mind no you are going to see and it seemed like a dare to me like he's telling people go ahead walk off he's, he's saying you're not going to do it he doesn't think you're going to do it at all
I, I, <laughs> it's just, it's comical at this point. What this guy says. I, I don't know if he believes what he says or not. I know he's being fed things to say. Whether or not this is truly what he thinks, and I, you know, I, I know the guy's no good. Let's just face it. He's not. And I'm sure he's getting a, a great kick out of this, having all this power, trying to tell people what to do and how to live their life. And then he mocked Americans' freedoms. He's done this before. Talking about freedom. And he says, oh, you talk about your freedoms and those people that want to choose not to get the jab. And he goes, well, you can choose to kill someone with your Rona too, you know. Tired old lines from a tired old man. It's a disgrace to this country. This is not an American president. This is not an American administration at all. But why did it happen? Do you ever stop and ask yourself that question? Why did it happen? God allowed it to happen. Because Bible prophecy is unfolding. And just like in ancient Israel, when the people of Israel rebelled against God, when they decided to live lives that were in immorality, when they would constantly be sinning against God. And I'm not talking about a, a little slip up here and there, but a lifestyle that was against him, that disobeyed his commandments, that showed on a daily basis they wanted nothing to do with him. He allowed them to go into captivity. And that's what I believe is exactly what happened to America. God allowed America to go into captivity because America continued to shake its fist at God instead of on their knees repenting that God would save the nation. And I'm not saying that there weren't Christians, good people that did that. I know that there were. But as a whole, America has been in a, in a downward spiral for a long time. That's how you got this administration. No matter how they got put into place, and we can talk about that. And I can't go into detail because, you know, reasons. But bottom line, God didn't stop it. Okay. He allowed it to take place. So where does it leave us now? Well, I would argue that it actually leaves us in a very interesting position and maybe one that we wouldn't actually see if this had not all been happening or isn't happening right now. That's that we put our faith and trust totally and completely in Jesus Christ. And see, for those people that have Christ, that's going to be something that's easy for you to do. But for those of you that don't, or you've been on the fence about this for a long time, you're going to struggle in this world because this world is going to continue to slip into immorality and more decay. And eventually it will lose everything that it has that it once stood for. You will see a police force gone. What does that look like? Complete lawlessness, yes. But also the rise of a global government with global officers that will be enforcing only one rule of thought at all times. That's the way it's going to go. You need to be prepared for this. The best way you can be prepared for is spiritually, which is what we do here, getting people to Jesus Christ through our ministry, accepting him as your Lord and Savior. This is your chance to do that right now. I'd love to lead you in a prayer of salvation. You can do this prayer in your own words. I'll give you the steps that you need in order to bring that prayer before the Lord. Here's the first thing that you want to do, and that's acknowledge that you're a sinner. Now, it's something that we all are. But God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do, though, is repent of that sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from a lifestyle, a habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He'll wipe that sin away. The Bible says he won't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more for you guys on this down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.